Hey, what's up guys? This is Marcus from Core. We finally have an update on the gulches. Uh, there's a little bit of good news, bad news. And first, the bad news. We, we published some information uh, with the record of decision last fall that, that was rendered uh, for the Pike and San Isabel National Forest Travel Management process. Now, the final decision in that process did as we expected and unfortunately officially closed the gulches, sections of trails, and Corral Creek that are in Park County. And there is some good news in that. So while unfortunate, you know, for us that the um, objection process we went through, uh, the regional forester did not, you know, find in our favor and upheld the closure decision. Uh, the good news is, is that honestly, we expected that. We expected that the final decision based on the information that we'd uncovered, that that's, that's what was gonna happen. They were, they were always shooting to close these roads and trying to game the process in order to do so. So with that, we spent the last three years documenting everything going through, you know, the, the data dumps of, from our FOIA requests, the emails, building the timeline, um, getting everything prepared to file litigation once that decision was released. And I can tell you that on February 14th, CORE officially filed uh, a legal complaint um, to begin the litigation process against the Pike and San Isabel National Forest for that decision. And with that complaint, we'll be challenging the decision on all five of the, the roads segments listed in Wildcat Canyon. You know, the major ones are the part of Longwater, Hackett, and Corral Creek that are all in Park County. Um, and yes, it is official that those trails, the legal sections of those trails end at the Teller County line. That is much before the river. Uh, and there's been a lot of arguments and confusion about if they're closed, where they're closed. They are officially closed at the Teller County line. Unless you know where that is, it's not clearly visible on the ground at this moment. Um, but that that officially is the case. And then we'll, we are challenging a number of other uh, segments of closures, most notably the upper segment of Twin Cone. So the section that goes from right about Timberline all the way to the top of North Twin Cone Peak. Um, some of the other roads in uh, Park County over by Peerless and Horseshoe, and then some, some off of Buckskin Joe Mountain there as well. And then a few off of uh, Rampart Range, so Winding Stairs and a few others. And essentially what happened to try and make this simple so that it's easier to understand is during travel management, the Forest Service goes through a travel analysis process where they, they gather data on all of the road and trail segments that they're analyzing. And the good thing for us is that there's a recreational use value that is included in that. So if the roads are highly valued by the recreational community, then if they're not needed for a number of other reasons um, documented by the Forest Service, but they're of high recreational use value, then they can be kept open or in some cases converted to a full-size motorized trail to maintain recreational access to the public. Now, in the case of the Pike and San Isabel travel management process, what happened here is that several road segments and all 12 of them that we have listed in our complaint were deemed to have a low recreational use value. And we feel that that was on purpose. Uh, and this mostly happened in the Pike National Forest. There's not a lot of um, things that we were unhappy about or, or stuff that that came up through the process in the San Isabel um, for recreational use value. We, we feel pretty good about um, the decision-making in the process in that national forest, but the pike is a different story. And so what was happening is that if, if certain Forest Service employees, and this includes district rangers over there, wanted some of these routes ultimately closed, they were arbitrarily assigning them a low recreational use value. And then what's happened in the scoring rubric is then that 
they determine those to not be necessary for any purpose and to schedule them for being decommissioned, basically closed uh, for public use or to convert it to administrative use only roads so the public still can't use it. And that, that's really what this complaint is dealing with, is that the public commented, you know, we commented, we put out a lot of uh, videos, you know, a lot of you guys out there watched those videos and commented on them as well, how important they were to the motorized community and to recreational use. Now, unfortunately, all those comments were dismissed and, you know, they, they technically have to respond to comments in their process and they, they just, you know, typed out some general statements saying that, you know, the travel analysis process, we call it TAP for short, the TAP process is beyond the scope of travel management and so they're not going to revise any of the, the TAP scores. But unfortunately, that's what really drove the travel management and the recommendations within the process. And that is what this complaint is getting with, getting to, is that internal staff cannot dictate the outcome by purposely scoring routes in a way that they know what the end result will be. And then if they score low enough and they're not determined to be needed for any reason, then they can bypass the NEPA process and they don't actually do a NEPA on these routes because they're determined to be unnecessary. And that's what happened in this case. And we all know that's nonsense because I see all the arguments, the, the discussions, the, the blatant fights, the videos, all the stuff that happens on the gulches. There are people continuing to use those trails and have since 2004 after the, the Heyman fire was totally over and they they did their environmental assessment. They've continued to use all of those routes. Um, you know, this past weekend, there was any number of dozens of users in and around the area. So they're continually um, needed, necessary, and important to the motorized community. Um, but they purposely suppress that information. And, you know, we don't feel that's right. You shouldn't feel that's right. You know, the, prop, the public process is supposed to involve the public so that we can tell the agency what's important to us so that they can evaluate it correctly and objectively, honestly, through their process. And that's unfortunate because this is the last result, right? Like we, were, we participated in the process. We participated in the travel management. We participated in the objections. Um, we did everything that we were supposed to to be involved and to let the agency know how motorized users felt. And this is our last option. You know, they didn't, they didn't feel like um, the process was incorrect on their part, which honestly is, is somewhat frustrating. The Forest Service gets to make a decision, and then you're like, wait a minute, did you make the right decision? And they're like, oh yeah, let me thumb through my, yeah, actually we were correct in our decision. Uh, so this is our only option is to you know, put this in front of a judge to uh, see what the DOJ lawyers and then the, the Forest Service Council think about how they did their process and then advise them accordingly. And you know, there was over 120 miles of uh, roads that were closed as a result of the travel management process. And unfortunately, the large majority of that was in the Pike National Forest. And more specifically, 60% of all of the closures happened in and around Park County. And so that should tell you something. I mean, it's really unfortunate when you can go through the information and document, you know, what what the Forest Service was doing, uh, specific employees over there, to try and ensure that the, the process would close many of these routes. And it didn't matter what the public said or what the public did. You know, if, they, if they're the ones running the process and they, they know how to game this system, then they can arbitrarily score things so that they know what the recommendation is ultimately going to be. And we even have internal emails that they were trying to keep all of the gulches out of the NEPA process because they knew that if, if there was an unbiased look at this, that those routes could be open through this process. That somebody could look at that and say, you know what? This is actually a recreational asset. That previous scientific information studies that, that were done by the Forest Service said that with proper maintenance, the water quality would be better if the roads were open and maintained, that erosion would be contained if the roads were open and maintained, 
And oh, by the way, these are in a two-way management area, which is specifically set up for motorized, semi-primitive motorized recreational use in their own forest plan. So they knew all these things and they purposely gamed their own process so that they could gain a closure as the final decision. So we need your help. We need you to keep you know, following our information, following our feeds, following our emails, um, follow along so that you know when there's an update um, in this process. If you're viewing this you know, video through an email, then you can go down through the content that's included with it on social media. You can see the, the information in uh, the post displaying this video. Um, or potentially a link to our news page on our website. And then there you'll find three separate um, links accompanying this. You'll find the link to the, the complaint that was filed, so you can read down through that if you'd like. You'll find the link to all the exhibits that are mentioned in the complaint. So if you want to read through all the information that we found, um, you're welcome to do so there. And then also the link to the fundraising campaign um, to help support this litigation in this fight to keep the trails open. Um, so please go through all of those. If you'd like to support us, um, you know, you can click on the GoFundMe account that goes directly to the legal fund. I mean, right to the legal fund. There's, there's nothing else that that, that that money is used for. And if for some reason we come up with a settlement in this and there's, you know, legal fund money left over, that'll, that'll continue to stay with Trail Defenders, which are 501c3 nonprofits set up specifically for legal and litigation issues. All of the extra money would just stay with that organization so that we can, you know, help pay for future legal counsel, or I hope not, but unfortunately future legal fights if, if there are others on the horizon. So go down through read some information, go back on our YouTube channel, watch some of our initial videos on Wildcat Canyon if you wanna follow the full backstory and uh, get caught up to exactly where we are today. But remember, it's up to all of us to work together to help keep trails open.